With the new year just around the corner, imagine you're one of only 100 growers serving 6,000 eager customers who sell more than 20,000 brands of a single product. How do you predict price in a situation like that? Good question. Here's Peter Tubbs. 60 acres of trellised vines in Yakima County, Washington, are home to a key component of America's burgeoning craft beer business. The hops grown here add the bitter flavor in beer, that snap on the palate, which comes from the variety and volume of a primary ingredient used in the brewing process. For craft brewers like Nick Bowes of Rock Island, Illinois, the decision on how much of the indispensable spice to use in Bent River Brewing's newest offerings is a delicate balance. So we have a fairly knowledgeable uh, market, you know, around here, and uh, they they want the breweries to, you know, what's new, what's next. They want to see see, you know, every time they come in, they like to see a different beer that they can try. For brewers, the customer-driven pursuit of hop flavor creates a price conundrum finding the right hops at a profitable price. However, brewmasters often purchase the vital ingredient blind because the market lacks transparency. Part of the problem is the size of the market. While the industry generates two billion in sales each year, less than 100 growers produce the majority of American hops. With over 100 varieties in use, there are essentially 100 separate markets, each susceptible to price swings due to demand, weather, rumor, and fashion. Douglas McKinnon has worked in the hops industry since 2000. Uh, we know roughly where the prices have been, and we know roughly what the market will bear. And so then you somehow in the middle there have to calculate your profit and then try to negotiate a good deal with the, the growers. To avoid being caught in a scarce price environment, both brewers and merchants contract hop sales often three to five years into the future. Farmers benefit by removing some of the variability in their incomes. Merchants have a destination for the hops they buy during harvest, and brewers get predictability in their production pricing. Uh, we usually end up about uh, third quarter every year trying to sell off some of our excess from our contract because again, you know, I'd rather be slightly over contracted than just be not unable to produce one of our core products. The journey of hops from hop yard to beer glass has multiple steps. The hops must be separated from the vine, then sent to a kiln for eight hours to be brought below 10% moisture, then packaged in 200-pound bales for storage at 34 degrees until they can be either compressed into pellets or converted to an extract. Hop pellets, if properly stored, have a shelf life of up to three years. Canned extract is good for a decade or more. The multi-year shelf life of hops can actually make a spike-prone market more volatile. With no standardized inventory data, a bountiful harvest in one production year can depress the market for several years to come. Higher demand from the craft beer industry has boosted United States hop production 28% since 2000. As an affordable luxury, a young generation of beer drinkers has adopted craft beer over the mass market beer their fathers drank. This market shift has encouraged the installation of thousands of acres of hops in the Pacific Northwest, worrying some that a crash in hop prices may be on the horizon. So what happens is the, the hop industry is never in balance. It's never, it never finds equilibrium. It, so it's always either oversupplied or undersupplied. Craft brewing uses dramatically more hops than conventional brewing, and craft beer continues to carve market share away from national beer brands each year. Hop production is expanding to meet demand, with 8,300 acres added in 2016, the third consecutive year of double-digit percentage growth. The Gamash family has been farming hops in the Yakima Valley for 75 years. So by, hopefully, by the time that you're harvesting your crop, you already know what you're going to get for it and where you're going to deliver it. The arid Yakima Valley is an ideal growing region for hops, and the climate allows farmers to reconfigure their yards to meet changes in demand year to year. 
But the opacity of the hot market makes those moves risky without long forward contracts with merchants and breweries. The capital requirements of hops are immense. 10 acres of new hops can cost a half million dollars to install and grow the first year, but can gross $12,000 per acre annually. And any plans to process hops require a minimum $2 million capital investment up front. This includes the separator and kiln required to prepare the hops for storage and eventual processing into a format brewers can use. High startup costs acting as a barrier to entry for prospective growers, coupled with the volatility of the hop market, has led to legacy operations with many on their third and fourth generation in the valley. The institutional knowledge is important to weather the lean years when hop prices collapse. Guys that I'm drinking beers with, uh, one day my grandfather probably drank beers with their grandfather. And most operations are diversified across crops and calendar. Crews will pick hops, grapes, or apples, depending on what is ready that day. I think we're going more in the direction of the English style pub, where local is really important. But there's tons of room at the bottom of the scale, where you, know, you have a guy who's a brewer in their neighborhood, and they have five, 10,000 loyal customers. There's tons of room for that. And if that's the trend in the market, we could easily have 10 or 15,000 breweries in this country in the next few years.